So you want to save a couple bucks on your C8. What are you sacrificing? Will you regret it? Will your friends and family laugh at you? Let's dive in. All right, first and foremost, if you're new to the Corvette or C8 game, what is a 1LT? What does that mean? That's simply the trim level, not the performance level, but trim level. There's three of them. You got your 1LT, you got your 2LT, you got your 3LT. Your 1LT is your is your absolute bargain basement deal. You get what you get. 2LT is a lot more of a tech package, if you will, with some other little fancy little creature comforts inside. And your 3LT is all the things you have the 2LT, but everything wrapped in carbon fiber and leather. Higher dash, better seats, better bolstering with the 3LT. You get a real leather airbag cover with the 3LT. You know, all the bells and whistles. And a quick side note, the 3LT is a very nice option if you do decide to go that way. However, comma, I've seen nothing but bad things about the, uh, the dash inside bubbling. A lot of the C7s, 3LT packages, my sister's got a fairly new 2018-19 Escalade, uh, leather trim dash, it's bubbling. Um, a lot of the C8 3LT trim is bubbling on the surface after a couple years. Some less than a year is bubbling. I'm not sure if it has to do with the sun, where you put it, the climate it's in, I'm not really sure. But my opinion, the 3LT, although very nice, can be kind of a headache. And also your 1, 2, or 3LT has no bearing on your performance. That's more of a C51 or non-C51 option, which could be a video for another time. Now my C7 had a 2LT, so I'm familiar with about 90% of the goodies you get with it. But new options for the C8 over the C7 was the rear view mirror camera and the wireless phone charger, which is not an option in the C7 at all. Now two years ago when I started my C8 purchasing process, my budget was $73,000 and it was a no-brainer to get the 2LT. Now fast forward two years, uh, two model years go by, MSRP goes up about five grand. My investment accounts have shrunk quite a bit. So my budget went from about 73 down to about 70. So I really had to weigh the pros and cons of which trim level I wanted to go. I ended up getting the 1LT obviously, and that saved me about $3,000 under budget. So on my C7, the two things I absolutely loved about the 2LT package that I really wanted was the HUD. I know it's very polarizing. People either love it or hate it. I love the HUD. I love it in my C5Z. I love it in my C6, I love it in my C7. And another thing in the C7 I actually, I absolutely love, especially in the summertime, was the cooled or I guess ventilated seats. Now I will say this, the, the heating feature of my C7, I would turn it on and not even know it was on. It, it was very weak in the C7 in the heating compartments. Where I live doesn't get terribly cold, so I'm not too worried about it. For instance, my Mini Cooper, which is a, a winter package, uh, you turn that thing on full, within 30 to 45 seconds, you have third degree burns. That thing is all business all the time. In my C7, it was very slow to get warm. When it got warmer, like, is it even on? My wife's Cadillac, it's exact same way. My sister's Cadillac, exact same way. I'm not sure if it's a GM thing. Uh, maybe it's a safety issue, I don't know. But GM heated seats aren't the best, in my opinion. Now, come summertime, though, it gets very muggy here, very hot. I really do appreciate the cooled seats. You get swamp butt in the summer and you turn the AC on floor with the ventilated seats, it felt so good. So I definitely will miss that come May, June in this guy. I'm drinking a beer, by the way. I had a long day at work. I'm not driving nowhere, I'm home now. Now, as far as the rear view mirror camera, although very neat, kind of novelty, I've used it in other cars. I believe it was a Nissan, something newer. Anyways, it, it kind of messed up my eyes. It kind of didn't agree with me. It, it kind of uh, had a hard time, my eyes had a hard time adjusting back and forth, if that makes sense. And in this guy, I find the regular mirror to be just fine. I've addressed this in a previous video where the rear visibility in 1LT is fine, over my left shoulder fine. Over the right shoulder, I'm getting very used to it, but there is a little bit of a blind spot. I do wish this had the, the blind spot monitoring. Uh, that would be my first argument for the 2LT. It can be kind of dangerous, if you can get used to it. But I really think that the 1LT should have been an option with it with a little bit higher price tag, if that makes sense. So if you're worried about safety at all, probably go with 2LT. If you're okay with it, 1LT is just fine. All right, now when it comes to interior color choice in the 1LT lineup, you have three choices. You have Adrenaline Red, Sky Cool Gray, and Black. Uh, now, I will say, unpopular opinion, I love the way the 1LT interior looks with the red and then the red stitching. It's just enough. The 2LT, 3LT, all red. It's like a, it's like a red bukkake all over your, your dashboard. It's just too much, in my opinion. 
like I said, to me, less is more, more simple. I think the red with the red stitching is very elegant. I think it's a perfect combination. And then you have the really cool aluminum bright work and all the trims, it looks amazing. You can option the carbon fiber, in my opinion. I think the aluminum just looks better, more classy. As far as technology, no matter which one you get, one, two, or three LT, you will get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto with navigation. And OnStar, I guess that's part of the package too. I don't know. And all of them get Wi-Fi. Uh, it's 4G, but it's pretty quick. And dual climate, of course, for both passengers. 10 speaker is standard on the 1LT. You get a 14 speaker in the 2 and 3LT. One of my apprehensions getting 1LT, though, I was kind of worried about was the sound quality. The sound quality in this thing is phenomenal. It rivals anything else I've ever heard. I can only imagine or I cannot fathom how much better a 14 speaker would be over the 10. Um, I'm not really an audiophile, but this thing blew away my expectations of what I thought it would be. Uh, it sounds better than my C7 2LT, but that helps you for any kind of barometer. But yeah, the 10 speaker system in this is more than enough. Also, in the 1LT, the seats are what you see is what you get. It's a very supportive seat, but there is no real bolstering on the side, nothing to adjust. I feel like these seats were made for a person my size. I'm 5'11", 6 foot, 170 pounds, and I fit perfect. No issues whatsoever. If I was larger, it might be a little comfortable. If I was smaller, I'd probably want a little bit more on my size. But for an average size person, perfect. No complaints there. That's a very, that's very subjective. I get it to the size of the person you are. But for me, seats are perfect. As far as the comforts and material as far as this to my C7, the leather and feel is almost identical. The leather quality is very good. I believe it's Napa leather, don't quote me on that, but it feels really good for a base entry level trim. Another thing that I don't really miss, but it's something you might realize once if you do go the 1LT route, and that is your home link on your visor. You do not have the garage door buttons. It's not a big deal. It just means you gotta use a proprietary button that came with your garage door. I don't mind, I clip it right there, it's fine. I'm sure I could source a visor from a two or three LT, throw it in there, and I'd be good to go but some people might not like that. Front end visibility compared to the C7 is phenomenal. In my opinion, you don't really need a front camera like you did in the C7. The C7, I, I really needed one because the nose was so long, you couldn't see shit up there. But in the C8, you can almost see the curb in front of you. So is it nice to have? Yeah, you don't really need it, in my opinion. It's just something else to break. But yeah, the frontward visibility in the C8, phenomenal. Now the rear facing camera that pops up when you're going reverse, is the best camera I've seen in a new car. It's like watching the full 4K screen. It's even at nighttime, it's super bright. I don't know how it does it. The geometry on it, that the, the little the little graphic that shows you where you're going, phenomenal. Overall, the rear camera on this thing on all platforms, one, two, or three LT, phenomenal. No issues there if you have one LT. Uh, backing up, good to go. Now, people that don't know Corvettes, a lot of people have looked at this thing, my neighbors, co-workers and people at a gas station that I know nothing about Corvettes are blown away by the cabin. I'll let them sit in it, I don't care. And they're just like, holy cow, this is nice. They have no idea to do a two or three LT. To them, it's just like an amazing interior. And then I always ask them what they think the sticker is. I just think it's amusing. Uh, nine times out of 10, they guess 90K plus. I tell them what I paid. They don't believe me, that's fine. But yeah, non-Corvette people that don't know what it is are just blown away. So that tells me that the interior quality it's just amazing in any trim you get. But for me, 1LT was more than enough. So in conclusion of this quick little video, the two things I really wish I had was the safety features as far as a blind spot on the uh, rear passenger side and the cold seats. As far as the HUD goes in my C5 and C6, I sourced uh, HUDs for both of them. I put them in myself. The C7 was possible. It was really involved. I had a HUD, so I never really farted with it. Uh, but in this guy, there's no HUD, so I was like, hmm, you can source a HUD off a, um, off a salvage C8, pretty cheap on eBay, three, four, five hundred dollars, that includes the little buttons too, and from what I've seen and data I've done, the little dash cover right there seems to just come right off, and if that's the case, you can just put a HUD in there, put a new cover on it, hopefully it's plug and play and run the wiring to where the little button should go, and we might be in business with the HUD. That's probably going to be a summer project. I got a lot of things that I got to take care of on the C5Z first and this guy too before I even get there. But that is coming down the pipeline eventually to do a HUD retrofit in a 1LT C8. And in the end, it doesn't matter what trim you get, 1, 2, or 3LT. They are all phenomenal cars. If you want something more performance oriented, a little stiffer suspension, I recommend the Z51. And real world numbers, the non and Z51 cars are in a straight line are pretty damn similar. On the track is where you'll notice it. 
Uh, this has the non C51. The suspension is very nice. It's almost too nice. Uh, the C51 is a little more stiffer, but um, yeah, that's where you'd see the C51 improvements on a track. If you decide to go the 1LT route like myself, no one's ever going to think you got the commoner peasant model. It is a very well equipped car for what you get for the price. For $65,000 starting, it is un freaking believable. So, hope you guys found some value in this video. Um, a lot of questions about this, so I had no problem uh, talking to those and answering them. Um, coming up next, I'm doing a C5 versus C8 comparison video. And then after that, I'm going to do a video tutorial on how to start a YouTube automotive channel. A lot of people have asked me in general, after seeing the video of how Corvettes, my YouTube channel, pays for my cars, people are very interested. So I'll do a full tutorial on on how to get started, uh, what software I use, how I go about making thumbnails, all that stuff, if you're curious. So that should be out probably about two weeks or so. Um, the only thing I ask is that if I do make a tutorial, just don't steal from my segment. Stay out of C5 and C8 content. So that'd be great. All right, guys, that's all I got for today, and I'll see you guys in a few days for another fun, fascinating video. Mark out.